stereophonic sound for the home is recorded on two separate tracks, each one giving special emphasis to certain sections of the orchestra, as heard from those positions. Now, when played back simultaneously on two separate systems, the sounds are blended together to achieve a new dimension of sound impossible to obtain in a monolo recording. So this thing right here didn't really turn out too bad. This is for a guy that I know and he's trying out some some new type of product with this thing. And I honestly think it's gonna be pretty sweet if it works out, but if not, then it's cool. I made this cool thing and I learned a lot. The one thing I learned a lot about was engraving with that 60 degree engraving bit. And it has a quarter inch shank. And that engraving bit, it doesn't come to a perfect V, it comes to like a, like a ball point almost. It shows in the specifications the diameter of that ballpoint, and from there you can program that tool to the tool path that you want, basically in Fusion 360. Now you can't go very deep with that engraving bit. Maybe I think I went 40 thousandths with this, which is actually kind of a lot, but it, it did the trick. And I just wanted to make sure after I put the paint in that I could sand over it and not bring the paint back out of the engraved part. So let's check out real quick how I program this thing in Fusion 360. So here is the model that I have right here and let me just start off on how I basically modeled this thing. So the guy that has this logo, he has a PDF of, of the logo itself. He sent me all of his logos just like this. So all I did was zoom in on the one that I needed. So that was this one right here and all I did was use this snipping tool and snipped it just like that and then saved that picture and I saved it as a JPEG or PNG file. Then I went to vectorization.org. I chose the logo file that I saved and then chose this DXF right here as the output format. Then you start and then it creates a, a DXF drawing based off that picture that you gave it and then you download that DXF file that it created and then basically you just go up here and insert DXF and boom it comes up and basically I just scaled it down after that so this is literally it right here so that website made this drawing basically this sketch and then I just extruded it based off the closed loops that it made within the sketches so I started out with an 80 thousandths thick piece of stock and I end up with 50 thousandths thick so I'm taking 30 thousandths off so I used a regular 3D adaptive with the shear hog and that basically took everything off. Then I went back around it and cleaned up everything around the sides with this regular 2D adaptive. And then I took my quarter inch end mill and went, went around the whole thing to make a nice, nice even contour around. And to get rid of the stock that the 2D adaptive left. And then I went ahead and faced everything off make it look real nice with the Superfly. And then this parallel. So this is a 3D machining toolpath. And it's this is pretty much my go-to on most engraving is this parallel right here so I used that 60 degree taper and you can see the lines right here that's the path that it's going to be taken so it'll leave just a little bit but it still makes everything look nice and uniform so I modeled that engraving bit as a tapered mill if, you, if I didn't model it as a taper mill then it wouldn't have done the 3D tool paths correctly that is so it is a 60 degree engraving tool so this 30 degrees right here that's 30 degrees for both sides so that's what made the 60 degrees and the diameter of the very tip of that is 10 thousandths and the corner radius is 5 thousandths 
So that means it's a pretty much a perfect ball, almost. And that is like the main portion of, of how to get this tool to work right with the toolpath. So I came in with this engraving tool at 10,000 RPM running at 35 inches a minute. And that seemed to cut really well. I was impressed with how, how nice it cut. Then I selected the boundaries where I wanted the tool to stay. So I told it, stay in this boundary and you can go center on the boundary if you want. So the center of the tool can be on this boundary point if it wanted to. So the step over with this with this super tiny engraving bit is one thousandth. So I'm only stepping over a thousandth of an inch each pass. So it, I mean it took a while. Actually, I mean it was only it was about 15 minutes. That says it's about 11 minutes right there, but it was actually about 15 minutes. So it really wasn't too bad stepping over that that fine amount. Uh, and I had smoothing on, and the tolerance was up just a little bit, and that just created a much easier toolpath. Then everything else here was pretty much the same. So that's how I went about creating this program. And of course, I always do a simulation just to make sure I'm not gouging the tools or anything. And then I'll toggle the actual model off. Here's with it with the model on, where you can actually see the model. But then when you turn it off, then you can see what the actual what it's actually going to look like. And it looks when you zoom way in, it looks like it can get kind of rough. But it's so small that at first glance, the human eye doesn't really recognize what's what I mean it, that it is bad. So especially when I put the paint in there, that made everything perfect. So I mean, it really worked out good, and I and I'm pretty impressed with how the engraving tool worked out. So I think that's it for now. So thanks for watching.